Hey scrappers, if you're looking to figure out what materials you should sell this week or hold this week, now is the time to do it. Our weekly report is gonna give you that information, up-to-date market news, pricing. Let's get right into it and we'll talk about it inside. Hey Scrappers, Tom here, and today is Wednesday, March 27th, 2024. We hope you're doing well, staying busy. Uh, here to give you the weekly report, have my kids spring break, so getting ready to go do a couple of things today, so sorry for the, the blurriness, but you know, spring break sometimes takes precedence. So what's going on with the markets? Uh, you know, there's been a lot of news the last few days that I've been looking at, and I've been saying for a while that I just don't understand the run up in pricing because the demand is not meeting the, the the supply has an oversupply right now and the demand is not there the goods and services are not really being produced or consumed i should say in nearly the the, the veracity that they want to so when you're looking at these prices you know you had this quick run up the last few weeks where copper went from 370 trading up to 415 right and now we're down below four dollars that's all in a period of three or four weeks <clears throat> i mentioned that because when i look at these numbers i've said it for, for years now we like stability and of course we like prices going up but state markets are better because you know where the markets and the prices are going to be and when you have large volatility whether it's on an upside or a downside it really causes problems i mean just just look at this week over week we've had copper prices go down over two and a half percent almost three percent that's just in one week's time that's not something that we want to happen we want copper prices to stay stable have a, a less than a percentage change week over week and when I'm looking at a lot of these supplies, while the uh, demand is starting to finally creep up in India where they're trying to get so many people up online, we just don't see the overall worldwide consumption of metals increasing. Take new car sales, for instance. When's the last time that you drove by a you know, new car dealer? What do you see? Full lots of cars. You also see prices going way up on vehicles and they're trying to push the electric vehicles, which many people don't want. So now you have lots of metals that have been consumed, recycled, produced into new products, sitting on lots, not going out into the market, which means the old cars that people would be trading in and then potentially scrapping are staying on the road, staying in the driveways. And this is where you start to see that acceleration that we saw in 2021, 2022, starting to dip down. And now we're starting to see that little bit of receding from the markets. You know, when we look at these things, people generally put money into precious metals as kind of a safe haven when markets are having problems. And with gold up over 2% week over week to an all time high, you know, we're seeing these things happening. And when you see different indicators happening, something has to be following. And it might not be apparent to see that quickly, but it is one of those things where we're just not seeing the market movement in the way that we want to. And I don't think that we're going to see it for a while. I personally don't think that we're in a strong economy. I think that we're in an economy that's continuing to churn and move forward because there's not another option. People need money every, all the time. People need money. But now with the inflation and different things going up, rent, et cetera, people need to continue to work. So the economy is going to continue to chug forward. But the massive consumption of goods doesn't seem to be going there. Where I was reading an article last week and they were talking about new phone upgrades. And so many people are content with their phones, their laptops, their, their tablets, that they're not looking to upgrade any of the things because technology became so good in the last five years that they don't need to get the new whatever it is year after year or every other year when their, their cell phone company tells them that it's time for an upgrade. People are just maintaining status quo. People are cutting cable. People are cutting down on things. And again, continuing to work, continuing to consume, but they're not continuing to spend on not frivolous things. That's the wrong word, but on 
on wants and not needs, right? You don't see the, you know, you see vacations and things like that, but you, you don't see the large consumptions of goods like you would, you know, around the Christmas time. I remember during COVID when everyone was getting that quote unquote free money, which is going to come to bite us in the butt um, years down the road, if not now. People were just buying things because they were at home. Now people are out doing things and the service sector is starting to grow. So you see the service sector increasing, but that doesn't affect the scrap or the commodities markets. So when I look at things week over week, I try to find bright spots, but I also try to be a bit of a realist to see what's going on there. Now, we did have a few people over the last week asking about battery prices. And battery prices are really stable. Lead prices have not gone crazy. Lead prices have been pretty, pretty flat where they are. Um, if we look up battery prices, we're probably looking around the 18 to 20 cent range right now. And for batteries, that's pretty good. Um, when, when we look at selling them to the yards, you're not going to see you know, large price increases on batteries, especially as we move away from uh, the traditional battery to the, uh, the these new lithium ion type. I'm looking here, 15 cents a pound is kind of the average that we're looking at for batteries. Um, you know, and you can see on the side, 14, 18, 16, nothing crazy. And scrapyards don't make a lot of money on batteries. So there's really not a lot of wiggle room when it comes to these prices. Um, but it is something to keep in mind because we're just not seeing that consumption. And then if we could switch over to catalytic converters for a second, I know people like to talk about those. What we've seen in the catalytic converter section in the news is something I don't see often. So I'd like to highlight and talk about it for a second. Last week, the Biden administration talked about increasing emission standards for all vehicles. What does that mean? That means that the catalytic converters that are going to go into these uh, vehicles are going to have more precious metals in them. And this is one of the the best pieces of market news on the cat side that we've seen in a while. Now, it did not lead to an immediate increase in pricing as platinum, palladium, and rhodium are all down over the last week. But you can see some of the prices here from rrcats.com. And I do expect some of these numbers to be growing the second half of 2024. I don't think that we have much uh, heavier movement for the for the next quarter. Here we are wrapping up quarter one, going into quarter two next week. I don't see much movement. We've had a national average, relatively stable. Um, but when I look at things like small and large bread loaves ranging from $45 to $300, we've started to see some of these prices increasing. The cats that we buy at rrcats.com, some of the, the regular ones, the GM flows, the ones off of Silverados, Tahoes, things like that, we've started to see some of these prices increasing, but we haven't seen that huge demand increasing and that goes back to what i said a few minutes ago people are keeping things longer to get a interest rate from a car company from a bank you're you're paying seven eight nine percent unless you're fortunate enough to have good credit and go through the, the actual company but you're going to see more expensive cars more expensive payments and that's going to deter people from getting rid of their new car so what we're going to have to see is a kind of an exhaustion of time right because what does that mean at some point you can't keep fixing something that keeps breaking or you have an old car that's off of a lease and it had 200,000. At some point, people are going to have to get vehicles. But where I think we are right now is they're going to get them only when they have to, right? And it's like you tell your, your kids, there's needs and there's wants. You want a new car, but do you need a new car? So until people get to the, the need phase many people are becoming smarter because the money that they're making isn't going as far because food gas housing is consuming it so that secondary market of buying new things or upgrading what you already have is really not increasing and that leads me kind of into steel prices and that's one of the reason that steel prices have continued to falter you know we can pull up some of the steel markets in the last week we've seen steel prices going down again overall we've seen another ten dollars a ton coming off the steel prices and now that the month is starting to end the quarter is ending you will start to see some of these steel prices decreasing even more now if we click on some of these like 
uh, we'll go to light iron or shred. That generally is a good bellwether to see where markets are going. Here, you, here you have light iron at one fifty two. You know, we saw this number recently over one sixty, and if you kind of look at the chart there. You can see in the last 30 days, we're dipping, dipping, dipping down 170, 160, 8 cents, 7 cents, 9 uh, cents per hundred or $9 per hundred, right? You can just kind of see these prices starting to, to creep their way down. And that's what we've been saying for the last few weeks. It's going to be a slow decline, but the decline is going. And that's one of the reasons that I've had a very strong sell recommendation on all metals. Um, stainless steel, for instance, Virginia, if we could pull up stainless steel, stainless steel prices, while they've increased, I still don't find it a metal that's worth saving. I just don't think that we're going to have any reason to hold on to stainless right now. If we click on just your 304 stainless at 31 cents, right, you can see some of these prices here, 35, 40, 25. Yes, they're up slightly in the last 30 days, maybe by a couple of pennies, but they're not up to the point where I would say, oh, yeah, just, you know, hold on to everything or whatever. I just don't see strength in the markets. Now, there are battery companies that are talking about using nickel inside of some of these new specialty batteries. But I also read an article out of Indonesia talking about how they're one of the largest processors of stainless, and they're looking to cap the stainless, the, the nickel price, between seventeen dollars and $18,000 a ton, which is where it is right now. If that happens and they're able to kind of, I don't want to say price fix, but if they have a goal that they want to keep the metal at, they're going to continue to process. And again, don't forget some of these countries, their labor rates are drastically lower than ours. So they can kind of produce things at a fraction of the prices that we can here domestically in the United States. So these stainless numbers off of the nickel prices are not going to be really moving for a while. So again, that's why my recommendation of sell all metals continues to be strong because copper prices are receding, aluminum prices are receding, lead prices are receding, steel prices are receding, right? So um, I didn't say a lot of good. But that's what I try to give you every week, what's going on and what's real. So when you go to figure out what to do with your metals, you have a much better idea. Now, we've had a couple of people talking about light iron. Some people are talking about um, uh, different weights that they have. I, I got to tell you, when it comes to steel, right, let us let me try to, to do backwards math to give you an idea. Scrap yards make let's say two cents a pound on steel, $44 a ton. And that could be before um, they really start to move it. So when you have smaller amounts of material, 200 pounds of steel, let's say, and the scrapyard's paying you six cents a pound, that's $12. If my, in my example, if they're making two cents, they're making what? four dollars on your 200 pounds that's why many scrap yards have limits my scrap yard we have a 500 pound limit on purchasing steel because by the time we unload it from trucks put it into hoppers and then you go to to, to dump it right you got to pay people to move to move it and now your profit's gone so some people while you get upset when you sell the scrap yards that's why we've said for years our advice has been save 500 pounds because then when you show up no one's going to say no but sometimes if you're taking apart a singular air conditioner and you have the outside jacket from the steel right what are you going to do with it you're going to fold it up keep it in your truck bring it home or if they're at the scrap yard just going to throw it away because you're looking at what a few cents, uh, you know, 25, 50 cents piece that you're throwing away. And I'm not saying that you're throwing it away because I know that you're recycling it through the scrapyard and you say, oh, why should I let the scrapyard make money? But you also have to think about your time. And that's one of the things that people forget about very often, how much time you spend doing things. What is your time worth? How many times are you going to touch something? Um, I like to think of things from a safety perspective. The more times you touch it, the higher chance there is for you to have an accident happen. So try to touch things less. And I know people are going to complain about 
kind of that advice. And, and I get it because I want to make as much money as I can too. But I also know that sometimes you need to let little things fall through the cracks because they're not important enough for you to sit here and spend time attacking or going after the bigger things. But that's why you can ask your scrapyard, hey, what can I do to make more money on my steel? And we have lots of videos on that on our YouTube page. Our YouTube page is such a great resource for you to learn about scrap check it out. We actually have a cool contest that's ending in the next few days and we'll pop that up real quick. We have a link below in our in our, our video right now. Join our YouTube page, follow us, watch some of the videos. We have a whole DeWalt package that we're giving away tools and bits and drill and, and batteries right now. You can check that out, hold, hold DeWalt driver set and you can enter the free contest by just checking out some of our youtube things watching some of the videos we've had over 500 entries so far and with only three days left you know there's lots of different ways for you to be able to access for free to, to, to win following our youtube checking out some of the videos commenting these are going to be things that help you long term sure we want to be able to market to you this is not like a, a hidden secret us and every other company is looking to, to be able to connect with people but we have information that helps you make more money right and and that's a really good thing and our videos tell you a lot of things that scrapyards don't what i tell you when i go to these conferences and people that know me they continue to say to me why are you telling people all the things that we have traditionally kept secret and i tell them because you're not my customer you're not my user the people i talk to online become my customers the people i talk to online are the ones that are looking for more market info and bigger scrapyards are not going to tell you a lot of this stuff because that hurts them their business for upgrades of material, et cetera. Um, and that's just not what we do here at iScrap. So, hey, Scrappers, today is March 27th, 2024. We hope that you found this helpful. Any questions, let us know. And until next week, I'm Tom, and I'll scrap you later. Thanks for watching our video. For $2.99 a month, by becoming a member, you can get access to early videos, member-only videos, merchandise discounts from our store, and priority comments that we answer before answering any other scrappers. Click the link below to learn more. Until next time, scrap you later.